because I sat here, I know that this doesn't work, and I mapped it out in Excel, and then it worked. And I'm like, well, what's what's going on? Okay, so honestly, uh, please like and subscribe because we are like living on top of each other here. I am in my workshop with this board. <laughs> I could really use some soundproofing, okay? So, uh, you know, like, subscribe if you like what you're doing. But today, today what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the, uh, the problem of averaging averages. And we have this nice little thing for a week's worth of, say, web page section views for a department store, for men's clothing, women's clothing, children's clothing, electronics, and appliances. <laughs> These are just like ideas out of my head. So what we have here is a daily average. So we'll do daily average, daily average, daily average, daily average. Daily average. I didn't like how that D worked, but I loved how fast it went. And then over here, let's say we do a department average. Oh wow, they're both D. I did not think of that at all. Let's say a page average. Page average. Page average. Now, the reason why I'm not doing this with actual numbers is because I don't have to. We have an Excel spreadsheet. We're going to prepare for this. Don't worry. Now, the average shaky camera for a second there. The average of this is going to be let's say take out the PAs right there and we're going to just do page little average equals five. So no matter how you do this mathematically, eventually you're going to end up doing basically this over here. This total average T divided by 25. Now, I sat here and I messed with this. Now, the reason why this is important is because today we're talking about the average of averages. Now, obviously, mathematically speaking, it all works out. You're going to do, you're always going to end up doing all of those numbers over there divided by 25. If you do that, the problem here is that this is data science and some of these are not going to always have a value so all of this works because these this has a value 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 and going this way they all have values going through Monday through Friday each department what happens when I do this Okay, so now we're over here and we're on the computer and we're actually going to show you the real fun of just working with 25 results. This is nothing. This is 25 results and we're going to show you just how bad using the average of the averages works. Now I do talk about this in an earlier video, I kind of brush upon it, where we're talking about the list or the, uh, you know, I keep saying this. Sorry, this is like take number three. Uh, we talk about the column versus row average. And we brush upon this because we actually do an algorithm that does not include null values. So I want to go, I want to go in here and I want to show you what ends up happening. Now, there's a very important thing you have to understand. Null does not equal zero. Okay? Because here we have the same thing that we had on the board it's copied in here and we have these wild i'm sorry i did this earlier and i did not correct it i didn't go back this is from take number two all right so 
right over here we have different ways that we did the average of averages. We have the average function used to get the entire thing, the entire, all of the different individuals, and you'll see that this, you'll, you'll see something interesting with this in just a minute. So just, you know, while you're, while you're waiting and you're just listening to me talk, why don't you go down and uh, like down here somewhere, just below the video and hit the like button. Maybe go over here, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell. Now over here, we have the average function used for the page values. Up here is the total. Over here is the sum divided by five. Now, you only use this when you know the results. So this is fine to use on a very small data format. Do not do this in big data. Now over here, we have the daily averages averaged by five. Again, don't do this unless you can see for sure. I can see that there are five results, okay, for Monday through Friday. I know that this is true. Okay, now if I were to do this for uh, over the course of like two years plus, where it's not three years, and I just don't really want to do the math, why would you do all of that excessive math trying to find out exactly what the day is when you could sit there, hit the average function, and then it's it, it'll always average based on the number of results. You don't have to go in every day and change that division number. Because think about that. The next day, I'm going to have to change this, this that that uh, 476 to 477. It's ridiculous, but here it's fine. So here we go. Each individual column, we total them, and then we we divide the entire thing by 25. Again, great thing. But like I said, this only works. And you know what? This is the third time I failed to to prep this because I went and I looked to see if, if Casey Neistat made a new YouTube video. Um, he hasn't. We'll just go over here <laughs> really quick. And um, in most cases, the over, overall average of separately averaged values is not equal to the average of the original set of numbers. That means you can't average the average. They can only equal if all of the averaged values are computed over numeric sets with the same number of values. In other words, if you know it's definitely going to be 5 by 5 and it's 25, you're good. So let's talk, let's, let's see what happens over here. The second that I say that this never existed. Oh wait, I'm sorry. That was to prove to you that zero does not equal no. Let's see what happens when we introduce, we take out this zero and make it no. What just happened? Because over here, let's, let's label this out really quick, okay? So this is B9 through F9, so this is daily average. This is the total average. This is what is this? Okay, this is the daily average. Oh, this is page value. Okay, so this is page average. This is daily average. I don't know what I was thinking. This up here is total. And this should be page. And then up here is your daily. So here you can see the daily and the daily are the same. Here you can see the total and the total are the same. And you can see down here the page and the page is the same. But what's correct? And we talk about this when you go row to column averages. We did talk about this in that video, so I want you to go back and look at that video because obviously it helps my views, but at the same time, I don't have to go into a big long explanation here and make this video excessively long. I like being able to tell you people things in short videos, all right? So this video is only getting longer as I talk about this. So 
What ended up happening here is very simple. This total and this total, these are actually accurate. Well, not actually, because you'll notice something here. They're 741 off. The reason why this is not accurate so far is because I'm still dividing it by 25. Remember when I told you that if you don't know how many uh, results you actually have, how many weeks, how many days, don't use the sum divided by function. I said it a few minutes ago, look, we're at seven minutes now. I told you at least five minutes ago. Don't do that. Just use the simple average function and you're done. Now over here you have the daily functions. Those haven't changed. And this over here is the average of totals. So this is not going to go uh, different because this is a total. But this is a different, this is a totally different uh, mathematical principle over this. Do you want to know what's the what what is the actual number that you should be looking at? It's right here. It's the average of the total. I'll highlight it really quick. See, I averaged all of them. Oh, well, this is a zero, so it doesn't it doesn't even get included. This automatically went to 24 different results, added together and divided by 24. And the second that I, the second that, that I change this back to a zero, it averaged because now we're bouncing off of that zero. Because watch what happens over here. Okay, you think that you think that changing nulls to zero would be fun, and it would work out well. Let's see here. Twelve. Twelve. Zero. All right, so we'll take equals that plus, what are you doing? Plus that, plus that is 24. Sorry. keep doing these these oversimplification things here all right that no that plus that plus that divide by three what just happened divide by three there we go. <laughs> what happened? Eight divided by th er, times three is 24. That's the 12 plus the 12. So what happens if I do this? Versus Well, that's not helping me any. What am I doing? It's the same. Ugh. All right, so we're gonna remove that in post. So all in all, your best bet always is to average across your averages. And then if you do end up with a null, you'll end up automatically accounting for that null. This has been Dave Splains, and I am done. I'll see you in the next one. You missed it, by the way. You can hear my, my my kids up there, I really need to afford soundproofing. So if you just help me out.
the subscribe button. I want to do here. Oh, here, here. Take out this one too. Oh, I have no idea what that was. Oh well. Here, it looks like this, right? And then it's kind of got like a little triangle in there, and then it says like subscribe. Yeah, hit that one. Okay. 